we first need to take a look at a common database scenario. And this is something that exists even today, right? So this communication or this interaction between applications specifically and the database, and it can be really any relational database that we want to think of, but let's just say that you want to select data. Well, that process of selecting data, you may or may not know it at this point, is actually something known as declarative programming, where you're really focusing on what you're trying to, to get, right? The results from this data selection, or maybe you want to insert information or update information. What you're really focused on is just the end result. And so whenever you get that data back into your application, traditionally, it's going to be on the application to go ahead and parse through, right? So going through the data to perform any subsequent operations, you know, whether you want to look at particular conditions or conditionals with if, else, else if statements, whether you want to actually loop through particular pieces of code or sets, that's all done on the application side in this scenario. And that is known as something as imperative programming. And it's really the antonym to declarative programming where declarative programming focuses on essentially what, right, the end result, and imperative programming focuses on the step-by-step -step nature or the control flow, the flow of control. And really underneath that, or a kind of derived from imperative programming is this idea of procedural programming, being able to group particular units or particular blocks of code into procedures and be able to run those procedures or reuse those procedures going forward. Well, that is what brings us to PL SQL. So pretty quick jump. And for those of you that may already be familiar with it, this is likely going to be a refresher, but we'll certainly increase in complexity here and we'll dive into exactly what you can do with PL SQL. But the addition of procedural language for SQL, right, it, it allows you to be able to combine both procedural code and declarative SQL, so the original structured query language, and be able to execute that all on the database side. So, for instance, in that previous slide, I was kind of splitting operations between application and the database side. PL SQL allows you to combine or extend SQL to perform procedural operations on the database side. And this allows you know, that code to be able not only to be executed on the database side, but to be stored on the database side, which we'll dive into here a little bit more. But looking at it from a very high level view, you can really think of it like this, right? On the left-hand side, we have this, you know, this image here of a PL SQL block. Now this block of both procedural and combined SQL code then gets sent into the database management system. And in there, the database management system will execute both the procedural code and the SQL on the database itself. Now, of course, that's a very high level view of what's going on. And I encourage you, if you want to dive even deeper into, you know, how the instructions get split up and executed on the database, go and head out to MariaDB's documentation and you can take a much better look. But taking a specific look at PL SQL blocks, we want to get an understanding of what makes that up so that we can understand how the block is used to leverage both procedural code and declarative SQL code. Well, the first thing that you can do is you have the ability to declare variables, right? So something that you're not necessarily able to do within SQL, you can actually use variables to, you know, maybe set default values, maybe assign those variables later on, very similar to how you would approach it using an imperative language or higher order programming language. Of course, if you're going to execute both procedural and SQL code, you need a spot to do that. And so the begin keyword here is essentially how you, you signify, okay, I want to, everything after this begin keyword I want to be able to execute both procedural and SQL code. You have the optional ability to handle exceptions, which I'll dive into in much more detail a little bit later on. And then, of course, you need to signify that the block of code is effectively finished. It's done. Um, and as I mentioned, both the declaring of variables, right, you may not necessarily need those inside of a PL SQL box, and the ability to handle exceptions are both optional. What you really need and you have to have is this beginning and an end. And anything inside of there is essentially what you want to execute. 